In my entire life as a Celtic fan, I do not remember a transfer window where the expectation on us breaking our transfer record was as high. Our expectation that we should be going into the market and being a bit of a player in the transfer market, going out there and getting our number one target, going and spending the money required with the war chest of Champions League money, with the war chest of good transfer business that's compounded year after year. And with the sudden windfall of the Jota sale to boot, it feels like everything's bubbling up in that direction. But we're yet to see any real concrete moves in that direction. But Celtic are set to sign player number three and number four of this summer transfer window with the additions of Yang Hyun Jun and Kwon Hyuk Q. I'm going to stick to Jun and Q. And these signings for me are a real bookend onto the outstanding transfer business, the unfinished business we had. We had these guys linked, particularly Q, who was linked alongside Cho, as you might remember. He's now moved to Midgetland in Denmark for around two and a half million euros. And Jun has only really been linked recently, but all of these players that we've signed so far feel like players that the club had long identified and started to make those moves for. And until those pieces of business just got wrapped up, I suppose internally the squad felt that there was unfinished business there that had to get addressed. So with me suspecting that, I thought, let's have a look at the squad. Let's really lay it out across the pitch and see exactly what we're dealing with depth and position-wise, as well as where should the next key additions come into the squad. Let me know what your thoughts and feelings are on the current state of the squad as we see it today and as we go through things in terms of the cover we've got for different positions as well as the quality that is available or not available throughout the squad. At any point in the video, if you do laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe to the channel. We're pushing for 10,000 subscribers before the new European season. The new SP, the new Celtic season. We've had amazing growth and support over the last month or so. So I sincerely, on behalf of everyone here, the Celts are here. We cannot thank you enough. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this one. Let's just get stuck into it. Now, this is a squad as I see it at the moment. You might want to pause the video for a quick second. I've got a little legend over there uh, just above my head in case you want to know what the dots mean. But I've tried my best to lay every player out in the position that they should find themselves in in our squad if they're ever going to be played. Now, whether it be a vital match like a derby, Champions League game, or it might be a cup game, a cup replay at home to bottom of the league and a congested fixture schedule. Could be any number of different scenarios where all these different players will be coming in. Now, I think we can agree on and dismiss probably a lot of the red dots quite quickly as players at the club will probably be quite actively looking to do something about. Mikey Johnson obviously has picked up an injury, so I think anything that does happen with him won't be until January. I think we'll be keeping a hold of Mikey Johnson for the foreseeable now. Albina Jetty currently has an injury, so it might be until January he leaves as well. And then with these four guys at the back, who really knows what's going to happen? I do suspect Scales and Sorrow will be on their way out uh, in Uruguay, probably another loan in McCarthy. Who knows how that will pan out? But now, as you can see, with Q coming in here into midfield alongside Iwata, who as a more versatile player can play in centre-back as well if required, it feels like we have now have actually two players that could really want to play in centre-defensive midfield and run the show for us. Now, Q, so far... Really talks a good game. He likens himself to Ki Sung Young, who I am a big fan of and really enjoyed his Celtic career especially. So if he wants to come in and be a bit of a Ki Sung Young who can tackle and boss midfield a bit more, then he's going to be a very welcome addition uh, to the squad. And he should push Iwata very, very hard to get into this spot here. If any of them are going to get in, if McGregor was to be played somewhere else in the pitch perhaps, or alongside McGregor potentially, or you know whatever the shape might become. But clearly, with this double kind of uh, security we've got here in that defensive midfield kind of role, McCarthy and Sorrow, their days are numbered. There's absolutely no space for either of them anymore in this squad. That is very clear to see. I think what we've seen from Iwata in this kind of defensive role, as well as in the midfield slot, gives me a lot of confidence of what he can go on to achieve for us this season in this position whenever he does get played. And like I say, with Q, if you look at his statistics and his readout and uh, the way he's projected to play in this kind of area here in terms of he's got great forward passing statistics as well as good dual success, very defensively capable and very forward thinking in terms of on the ball, which is why I think he likes the key Sung Young comparison because Key could play a ball. Key was an expert ball player for us and he could, he could hit a shot as well from range, which was nice to see. So if we're getting that kind of mould in there, it definitely does free up a little bit of the reliance on McGregor in that uh, controller position. Maybe he can play further up the pitch, but I do think then 
further up the pitch as we see quite quickly with Ben Summers coming through and getting rave reviews in this preseason alongside Rio Hitate, the main man, of course, the main playmaker for his last season. Odin Tome, who's come in, and also Haksabanovic fancies himself somewhere in this forward kind of channel to play somewhere at any point. So we'll see how he progresses through preseason under Brendan Rodgers. But in any case, this whole kind of left attacking side of midfield is very congested. So if McGregor was even to come into the reckoning here, it gets even harder to try and imagine what the best 11 eventually looks like. On the right side of midfield, I think with preseason as well, the way I've read one or two of the lineups is it felt kind of. 4 1 4 1, and in which kind of case you could see, and I think we have seen in fact, Turnbull and O'Reilly play side by side in that kind of double attacking midfield idea. Where because you're playing the defensive midfielder almost like a center back, you just let both the attacking midfielders just go and actually, you know, join the striker and become actual attackers in the attacking phase rather than having one kind of anchor off and hold in for passing triangles or opportunities to get out of a crowd and switch the ball from, from left to right or whatever. So I'm definitely leaving some room for thought on any evolution we might see in the team and what the what the manager deems to be the best 11. But I think we could see Turnbull get a lot of minutes in this kind of O'Reilly shadow position where over the last couple of years we've seen it with Rogic and O'Reilly, we've seen it with O'Reilly and Moy and I think, you know, and Turnbull's been sprinkled in amongst all of that as well, of course, but I think now firmly it will probably be this duet between O'Reilly and Turnbull, unless we see some other, maybe home could slot over on this side as well, or Summers perhaps, it's really, you know, there's a lot of versatility in these midfield positions and it's, you know, until we get some competitive football, it'll be really interesting to see exactly how the manager does lay out the chips himself. And in the forward line, Dyson Maeda and Kyogo obviously signing those huge extensions are huge pillars to go into this attacking slot here because Abada's future still got a little bit of a question mark on it. We're not too sure if, uh, you know, Abada personally feels all the way in, but like, is his agents talking? Is there interest? Is there a big money move in the offing, perhaps? Because Marco Tellio offers us great uh, versatility, who's been picked up already. But in this window now, alongside Q, the new signing Jun. Uh, offers us just as much versatility and his statistics compared to Jota relative in the K League to the SPFL you know you need to take that with a grain of salt but what these statistics show you is his raw capabilities like in a good situation if he's on the ball he likes to play in on the left hand side he likes to have interplay changes he can switch and play on the right hand side he can actually get involved in the play in the middle of the pitch here if he's cutting inside and playing one twos with midfielders and strikers so another very versatile forward who was breaking his back to make this move happen and you love to see that for guys that are coming to Celtic is that they want to be here they are desperate to come because they know you know Celtic is one of the biggest clubs in the world and uh, alongside him and Tilio, they give us great versatility and great options in these wing positions but Mikey Johnson been injured and you know who knows what his place in the squad is. Forrest on his mega lifetime contract, Rocco Vata breaking through as a youth prospect. It feels now that there's at least a kind of really firm base here. Now I do feel that there's definitely a missing piece here. You know, we're quite obviously missing a Jota level player. Now I did say last season Hak Sabanovic showed the potential to be a Jota level player for us. He was player of the month in November or October or something before you shout at me. Who knows, right? I would definitely, we definitely need a player in here somewhere. It's hard to figure out who it would be. I think with Kyogo signing his deal, all being very bought into the cause still and a jetty still even hanging about there. And I say it with his injury, unlikely to get moved anytime soon. And with even Vata being able to come in here as well, I suppose. An actual centre forward feels off the table. If a Bada was to go... You then feel that this right wing position could get a huge player added into it. And the main link we've got at the moment is Tete, who formerly of Leicester, Leon, currently I think kind of a free agent or something off the back of Shakhtar. I'm not too up to speed with his actual contractual situation and all the bits and pieces, but it feels like that deal is really close to happening. And I was talking to somebody, I forget who it was, but I think it was McBride Ace probably on the Sorare CSC. But the thoughts of having a Brazilian winger at Celtic just sounds and feels too good. Uh, so I would very much like that deal to happen for <laughs> maybe some of the wrong reasons. But very capable, uh, right winger, loves his left foot as well, so can play it in a number of attacking different positions, but can be very effective on that right attacking wing. And that was part of the problem we had last season where Jota was good on the right, 
but better on the left. Same with Dyson Maeda. And Abada wasn't ever really dominant on the right wing and really made the position his own. So a, a right winger that can really own that position and make it his own would be a huge addition. And maybe, I hope that would be Abada. Maybe he's on his way out. Maybe he is needs somebody else to keep pushing him and you know keep the squad at the top end level possible. And I think once we clean the team up and take out a lot more of the red dots, you kind of see where the space in the room is that could be available. Now, there's still some chat that there's maybe going to be some surgery on the left-hand side of the pitch between left-back and left-centre-back. I've not heard any concrete targets, particularly for left centre back. So let's see how that goes. But Burnaby, by all accounts, has been getting rave reviews in pre-season. I don't think Taylor has really made um, many appearances. Forgive me if I'm wrong on that. But Burnaby could have a new lease of life under Brendan. So it would be interesting to see if we did move for a left back with the options we've got here as well. But by all accounts, this side of the pitch does have other moves that are maybe similar to Q and Jun that have been kind of in the works for a while that might be coming off to fruition. Now, if all we were going to be challenging for this year was like Europa League or something, I think this squad would be like, put us on for the semi-finals, put us on for the final. This team is way too good for this level of competition. With us at home, Brendan as manager, how deep and robust this squad is, we should be smashing everyone and anyone we come across. And that's what I mean when I'm talking about this squad being of like a European standard, where we can go into the Champions League and really like we're still in that stage of the squad being like, we're quite sensitive to what draw we get. You know, if we get a killer of a draw, really, we could go and spend 40 million on this squad and still get hammered, you know, if the draw was that brutal for us. But with a, a fair enough draw, you know, where it's not absolutely the group of death or whatever, we're not that far away from being a team that should be looking at getting into those, uh, you know, records that we had before. You know, thinking about nine points at home is something we should be writing on the target list. And then it's doing damage away from home is the objective. A lot of this squad benefited from some Champions League and some Europa League experience over the last couple of years, but I do think anyone that comes in for mega money should be offering this squad some real experience at that level to really help level up, particularly in the attacking areas, because last season Kyogo missed a hat full of chances, and I do think he will make good on that this year, as will Dyson Maeda, in my opinion. But all the same, someone who's got a bit of nerve and a bit of a pedigree at delivering at a higher level and these players cost some money and particularly the ones in the attacking positions will not come cheap and that's fine you know the club should be prepared to splash out and go big on some of these players particularly when we are completing successful sales like the Jota one and if somebody like Abada or even a Hitate we've not really spoke about maybe he was you know his future still isn't totally clear there was rumours that he might have an extension Rogers kind of quashed any pending extension has been on the cards at the moment so maybe there's a wee bit of you know there's always crap paper talk about O'Reilly as well so maybe there's another outgoing to happen but all the same I think someone who is a bit more you know proven in this elite European arena has to be what's on the menu for the next series of transfers I think we've done enough being cute and scouting around the market and filling out all these squad spots very economically very good money ball tactics with the projection of any number of them coming halfway good and it being a series of good transactions for the club. All happy with that, all good. But now, with that war chest, it's still not been touched. You know, we need to get some real stars into this attacking zone over here. You know, I think that, you know, proper, yeah, like a Jota level addition into this side of the pitch. Because I do, do feel with, um, with Dyson Maeda on this side of the pitch and then however the midfield is configured, I do feel that a lot of this side is already taken care of with John, even Buddy Tillio, if you want to think about him over there um, as well. So I do feel that maybe this side, who knows if Turnbull is going to be his cup of tea, who knows what happens with O'Reilly, like I mentioned. But it feels like this zone here is probably the one that needs the most attention, the most of an upgrade. Because imagine Jota was amazing on the right-hand side, as good as we've seen him on the left at times then he would have been way better for us last season. We'd have probably done way better um, in some of the games where he didn't show up because he didn't show up every game last season. We all know that, you know? So I think that's a key area. If you were to look at last season as an isolated thing and just go, right, well, where could we really get more miles out of this team? And it would be there. So yeah, let me know what you think, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and retweet and all that good stuff. Hail, hail, and catch you on the next one. Take care.